Well, hi there, everybody. It's Mr. Verzat. This video is kind of a recap on lighting. Now, you can find stuff in depth on my YouTube channel regarding lighting, but this is mainly designed for my 2D class, students who are generally freshmen and have never had exposure to any form of art. Now, this is going to be very basic, though it would be applicable for students grades three and above as well, but I'm going to be using high school language. So lighting is oftentimes thought to be the same thing as shading. That's actually not quite accurate. Shading is how you would apply lighting to a form. Lighting is just how to consider light physics on your creations. Now those creations could be sculptures, paintings, drawings, marker, drafts, anything like that. You know, anything where there's light and dark, whether it's color or in black and white, especially for painting, because with painting, you're just drawing light is all you're doing. Now, it might sound complicated, but it's really not. Light reacts to a surface with consistency. That means that the rules for lighting never change. They're timeless. Now, the circumstances of that lighting, that's what changes. For example, here's this sphere, and it's lit from behind and above. Here's a sphere lit from behind, and here's a sphere lit from the side. That's the part that changes, and that's what's called a lighting strategy. You want to have that down. The rules for how to know what's light and dark in the piece, that's what never changes. So it's consistent. And if you remain consistent with the rule of light, your work will be believable. Now part of that rule is what's called a one, two, three read. We'll get into the numbers and what they mean later. But value change equals form change. Value change equals form change. Value is just a fancy word for darks and lights, whether it's in black and white or if it's in color. What that means is, is that because light is a ray, much like a laser beam, where it hits on a surface is not going to be the same. That beam originates from a set point. So one of the points that's going to be the brightest is the side of a surface that's perpendicular to it, much like a wall. Now as that form curves away, the bounce of that ray is going to be weaker and weaker and weaker until it's passing by it without directly touching it. That's about this point right here. This is called the terminator. That's where the form turns under and away. And that's where you generally put shadow on a form. Now that also means that this is the light side of a form. And there's way, way, way more than just darks. There's many degrees of middle grays and light grays, and actually very little white that goes on a form. So when you change the value of a form, you're telling the viewer's brain that the form is changing. This can be applied to simple spheres or even very complex shapes, just like this German Shepherd. You don't need to have a photo reference. If you have like this grid in your mind of where the form is flat and where it turns and where it pops out and sinks in, then you can apply lighting formulas to any facet of it and light this from many different angles. You're drawing with light. So by telling the viewer that something is far away or darker, we call that pushing forms away. And to pull forms out, they're usually taller to catch light. And so we call that pulling. So pushing and pulling your values gives the illusion of surface change. If you change where the light source is, it changes where the values go. If we take this little grid of a bunny rabbit, you'll notice that we lit it from the above and left area. And so we've got like some light here on the left and on top and some shadows on the bottom. Here though, we apply a light source directly in front and on the ground, kind of underneath where this form is and see it's lit scary. And you can tell by choosing a specific lighting strategy, it can change the mood of your piece dramatically. This is a little bit more ominous and scary. This one looks like a scary bunny rabbit coming through a dimly lit door to come and get you. And then this one is like it's just in daylight. Let's look at the second half of the formula. So value change equals form change. And now the one, two, three read. The one, the two, and the three, they all mean something. What that means is, is that the brain needs to see at least three values on a form in order to understand that it's three-dimensional. That's because we walk through a universe that uses height, width, and depth. So one, two, and three. Light, middle, and dark. That's as simple as you can get with it. And we can apply that to any type of shape, whether it's a cube, a sphere, or a cylinder, a cone, anything. For this demo, we're gonna be looking at a cube. That's the easiest one to teach this to for students because it's got clearly defined planes on it. We call that a planar surface. Let's break it down. A number one, that's called the highlight. That's where you have a direct impact from your light ray. In this image, the light ray is above and to the right. 
So that means if you drew a straight line from your light source, it would bounce directly on the top of this square and on the right side of the square. By the way, this is the side view of a cube. Let's look at the image over here on the right, and can you tell which side would be the number one highlight? That would be right about here. Number two in a one, two, three read stands for midtone. Midtone is the natural color or natural value of an object in basic light. So that would mean that if you have your light source, say up and to the right, the side of the cube that would be parallel to the light ray, that wouldn't get a direct bounce, but it would get a lot of ambient light. Can you find the midtone in this strawberry over here? Finally, we've got the core shadow. What I did in this image right here is I just used the light rays from the one and the two so that you can see where the three is. A three in the one, two, three read means your shadow side or core shadow. That's the side of a form where there's no impact. And as a matter of fact, it's on the opposite side of where the light's coming from. So it's that simple, one, two, and three. Now there are problems with this and some challenges that you'll face. You know that if you're my student, it's never just that simple. So here's an example of a really weird looking shape. We've got light behind and above, and it's shining down on this form. So we've got clearly defined ones, we've got twos and then threes, but you can see there are some slanted shapes in here as well. Well, what you do is you find whatever value that is in between two planes. Here's a one, what's next to it is a two, and so what's in between a 1 and a 2? That would be a 1.5, so a light gray. Let's go to the shadow side. Here is a 1. Here's a 3. What's in between a 1 and a 3? Well, you can't pick 2 because we've already got a 2 right here. That would be a 2.5. We'll say a dark gray. Now, here are some problems. What happens if your lighting strategy puts two planes that should be the same number right next to each other? Here's one. We're underneath this cube, and it's being lit behind and above. That means we're going to have a 2 on this side, a 3 on the opposite side, and we're going to see the underside of the cube, and that's going to be a 3 as well. Both 3s are on opposite sides of the light. Well, it's up to you as the artist to solve that, and generally what I tell my students is, is again, you need three values. So for beginner purposes, the shape or the plane that is facing the ground, it's going to catch the least amount of light compared to the plane that's facing outward. So make the bottom most plane darker. So let's put a matchstick right here, and that is behind the cube, to the right, and elevated above it. So we know that the light source is coming from above. So the way the rule works is, let's just say we've got a one. A one is when you've got a direct light impact, like a laser beam from that light ray, and that gives you a direct bounce. That's going to be your lightest spot. A 2 would be a side of the cube, like this one right here, that is running parallel with the light ray. It's not going to receive a direct impact, but it's going to get some light. It's going to be lit just from being in the environment, and that's going to be what's called a midtone. We call that a 2. And then you've got what's called a 3. That would be shadow side. That would be a side of the form that does not receive any light, and not only that, but it's turned under and away, and that makes it the shadow. So that means that this would be a 1, this would be a 2, and this would be a 3. So I'm going to take my 2 and just fill in this plane right here. I'm going to take the 3 and fill in the shadow side, and then I'm going to leave the top white. But of course, if you're my student, you know it's not always that simple. There are different lighting strategies, meaning if we put a light stick here in front of the cube and above it, then we're going to have a light impact here, we're going to have a light impact here, and then the light's going to just pass right by this one, right? Which means we're going to have a 1, a 1, and a 2. So the question is, which one do you make lighter than the other? if you've got two planes that are the same. Well, that's where the artistic decision-making comes into play. For the beginning student, I always say keep it simple. For the plane that's facing upward towards the sky, it's going to catch more light. So let's make that one lighter than this one. 
With this little guy, just grab your in-between color that you've got right here, your 20%. And for this little guy, use your 40. Now, of course, if we were going to go deeper, you would know that there are there's more going on in this cube than just making a, a light gray. There'd actually be very little white. The corners would be the only thing that would be white. You'd have like light gray going up into fading into white from the back to the front. You'd have all sorts of different degrees of dark and light on the cube. Uh, we're not going to worry about that now. We're just going to keep it very bare bones, basic, and simple. All right, so it's light from underneath. It's the exact same formula. Here we're going to ground the form, so imagine that there's this invisible stick, and here's the ground plane right here. Let's stick a light source behind the cube and underneath it and to the right. We're going to have a direct impact here. We're going to have an indirect impact here because that plane is parallel with the light ray, and then this side is opposite of the light. Now you might be in a situation where you've got a weird looking shape like this. Remember, the more direct the light impact is, the brighter it is. So in this situation right here, I would have this form that has that direct impact. I would leave that white. And then here and here, I would go 20%. And then here, I would go 40% too, right? But now it reads, we still have those three values, very light, dimmer light, middle, right? The brain still knows what it's looking at. So again, if you're in this situation, make a call and be consistent with that call throughout all the forms that you make in your piece.